Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is JP and today I'm going to be telling you everything you should know if you're going to be a floor hand in the oil fields. So let's not try to waste a lot of time, let's get right into it. So if you have never worked in the oil fields before, never set foot on the oil fields, you know, never even freaking looked at the oil fields, if you just been driving by on the highway or the freeway and just looked like, oh hey look, that's pretty cool, then you're at the right place because that was exactly me a long time ago. So if you are new to the oil fields, most likely they are going to put you as a floor hand. Now don't be scared. Floor hand just basically means you are on the floor. You're not up in the derricks. You're not doing something else. You're just on the floor helping out, okay? A floor hand is basically just an entry level position, okay? If you have never worked in the oil fields before, like, uh, like I never used to work in the oil fields before, then they are most likely gonna put you as a floor hand okay and let me tell you right now this is the easiest position you will ever have if you think you're gonna stay longer at the oil fields I guarantee you okay now don't be scared I was nervous I was scared when I was gonna be a floor hand because of three things one I was gonna be working on the oil fields it was a new transition for me you know before I had just been working in customer service for a long time so it was a new transition Number two, you know, it's it's a pretty dangerous job. If you're not paying attention, if you're messing around, if you're, you know, doing other things, it's pretty dangerous. I'm not going to lie to you, okay? And number three, you know, I was going to be working under some extreme conditions, and I just didn't feel ready for it. But for me, it was kind of a smooth transition. Sure, I had some bumps and some rocking to do, but for the most part, it was all right. So... What a floor hand basically is, is like I said, it's an entry level position. You are going to just be there as a helper, basically. You're just going to be there to follow orders. You know, there's going to be people that are going to be more experienced in certain positions than you. Basically, you just got to, you got to mimic what they do. You got to ask, you got to say, hey man, you know, I'm your helper for today. You're my mentor. Most likely, if you're with a company, they're going to pair you up with a mentor. This guy is going to tell you a thousand different things, okay? Now, you're not expected to learn these things right away. It might take you a couple of weeks, might take you a month. Hell, there are some people that I've met, it's taken them years to know to know every single thing, you know? Don't be expected to know these things right away, you know, because it's going to be a lot of information that's going to be dumped on you. Um, yeah, you're just basically going to be paired up with a mentor. He's going to tell you, go bring me this, go do this, go help this guy with this. It might seem a little intimidating at first, but it's all part of the process. Everyone goes through it. Everyone has to go through it. Um, you got to be hands-on, all right? Do not, and I repeat, do not act like a lazy bum, okay? If you are lazy, you need to cut that stuff out before you go and work with the oil fields because these guys... They're fast paced. Some of them work really hard. Okay, I'm going to tell you the truth. Not a lot of people want to be outside in freezing cold temperatures or in hot temperatures for long periods of time. They want to get this shit done quickly and efficiently and do it right. Okay, so if you're standing around not doing anything, that's a big problem. Okay, you got to ask your mentor, you got to ask the people that are there, you know, what can I be doing to help? What is it that you need done? You know, you tell me, I'll get it done. You have to be quick. You have to be attentive. You have to be ready for everything. Okay. If you're standing around, you know, hands in your pockets, that's a problem. Okay. No one likes that, especially if you're hardworking. No one likes that. All right. So one thing is you got to have a positive attitude. If you go in there pissed off every single day, you're going to, you're going to, be made out to be a guy that no one likes, okay? Have a positive attitude. I know that sometimes it's going to seem like this stuff sucks and, you know, life gets you down and stuff. It, I get it. It's all right. But don't take those uh, feelings out on your coworkers, okay? Especially not out on your mentor, not out on the operator, not out on, you know, the Derek hands or anything like that. It's going to be, you're, you're not going to look like a favorable guy amongst them, okay? So, have a positive attitude. If you get frustrated, if you get, you know, overworked, just tell them like, hey, guys, sorry, but this is a lot of information. I need time to process this. And I, most likely they'll understand, you know. 
Um, let's see what else. Believe it or not, you're going to be working with people that have colorful attitudes, okay? Sometimes you're going to be working with people that seem like they're a bit aggressive or agitated or things like that. It's normal, okay? I didn't know what I would be getting myself into when I worked as a floor hand because I went from, you know, a kid working customer service to a guy working with ex-cons, working with uh, people that have done time, working with people that have been through hell and back, you know. It's a bit of a weird transition at first, but believe me, these guys, they're there to help you, you know. Believe it or not, some guys, sure, they're a little rowdy, but for the most part, they're there to help you. Let's see what else. So again, as I said, you're going to be a floor hand, which means you're just going to be a helper. If someone tells you, go do this, you go do it. Someone tells you, okay, I want you to go help that guy, go help that guy. That's basically it. Most times there are going to be times when, you know, there's problems on the rigs and other people have to come in and your crew is not doing anything. There are going to be times when, you know, you're taking 20 minutes off because, you know, there was a pipe that didn't make it in all the way or that slipped through or a joint that's not going in properly or something like that. In the meantime, if you have free time, sure, go take a water break, go take a bathroom break, go take a lunch break. Only if you're, you know, mentor or you're, uh, or you really, really need it. But if you're, you know, if you have time and it's in the mornings or in the afternoons or something like that, tell your uh, mentor to, or ask someone, hey man, is there anything I can be doing? And if they don't have anything for you, this is what I always used to do. If they say, no, man, we're just waiting. We just got to wait on these guys to finish up. We got to wait on the wireline guys to finish up or something like that. If you know you can be doing something um, like cleaning, for example, or organizing, do it. That's what I used to do when there'd be no work. I'd be I'd be energized, you know, I'd still have a little bit of energy in me. It wasn't lunchtime yet. I took my water break a long time ago. I'd go and walk around the uh, designated areas that weren't being, you know, uh, worked on, that didn't have like the warning signs or anything like that. I'd go and pick up trash that people left behind. I'd go and organize the tools to make sure they're always in a, a place where people can find them. It's the little things that matter, you know, it's the little things that uh, are going to get people to say, hey, that guy's really hard working or hey, that guy really knows what he's doing. That guy's here to work. That's what people like to see. People that take initiative to do things, people that are there to work, you know, don't be one of those people. It's like, oh, I hate my life. It's so boring here. I don't want to be doing this. No one is going to like that type of person on the rig. But if you're there ready to work every single day, if you're there ready to learn, if you're there, you know, ready to, to be on the job, people are going to friggin' love you, okay? Now, that's pretty much what a floor hand is. It's basically the helper, the learner, the guy that is put in charge of small things. You're going to be learning from a lot of different people. It's going to seem overwhelming at first, but believe me, over time, it's going to seem like the easiest thing in the world. Um, if you're not afraid of heights, maybe along the lines, people are going to put you as the Derek hand, which is that guy that's 60 feet or 80 feet in the air on a platform that's going to be doing all kinds of different things. Like, uh, when they're pulling joints, they got to put the joints over on, a on a, what's it called? Kind of like a little designated area for them. Or sometimes, you know, the elevators are going to be coming up. You got to push them down or stuff like that, you know, things like that. So yeah. That's basically what a floor hand is. Over time, it'll 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 get easier, and trust me, it's going to be a position that you're really going to like until they put you on something else. I can't speak for other other uh, positions because I was only there for a short period of time. So basically, I was there for about a month. Now, when people hear that I was only in the oil fields for about a month, they're like, oh, this guy couldn't hack it or he couldn't take it. No, it's actually the complete opposite. When I got this job, I was super excited. I thought I was going to be there for a very long time until something happened. Very first day I went out into the oil fields, I met this guy who was the operator. His name was Marcos. I went up to him, I was like, hey man, trying to make friends, you know, I was like, hey man, how long have you worked in the fields, you know, do you like it here, is it fun? And he said to me, straight up, he was like, listen man, if I were you, I'd find a different job. 
And I was like, whoa, is this try tr guy trying to get rid of me? I just freaking met him. Like, what the heck? And, you know, during that time, I wasn't going to take any, any shit from anyone. I was going to be straight up with him. I was going to say, listen, man, if you don't like me, I'll talk to my supervisor and I'll get transferred to a different crew. Just be straight up with me. If you don't like me, tell me right now. And he was like, no, if I didn't like you, I wouldn't have picked you up in the first place. Okay. I'm telling you this because the oil fields are a place where you go where you don't have a lot of options left. Now, me, when I joined the oil fields, I was 21 years old. I had been in college. Uh, I went to Ames Community College um, a year prior. I had graduated uh, in 2020. Um, in the beginning of 2020, I had graduated uh, with a diploma. I was 21 and I had so many options because the people that I met at the oil fields, they had been in the oil fields because they had a family, they had bills, they had expenses, they had things to do. I didn't have any of that stuff. When I went into the oil fields, I was 21. I didn't have a wife. I didn't have kids. You know, I was still living with my parents, um, which technically doesn't sound like a bad thing because I lived in Colorado and it's really expensive there. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, he told me straight up. I would find a different career if I were you. And I started speaking to a couple of the other guys and they're like, yeah, man, you have so much of an opportunity to be something better. You know, the work here is great. It's fine. You're going to make a lot of money. But if I were you, I'd, I'd pick another career. And that really stuck in me. And so believe it or not, after thinking about it a long time, I said, you know what, I'm going to go out there and make something of myself. So I wanted to be an electrician. But since COVID happened, it messed all that up. So after hearing that advice from some of my crew members and after hearing about a couple of places that were hiring apprenticeships, apprentices with no experience, I decided to apply as an apprentice. And that's exactly what I'm doing right now. Um, so, yeah, I, I left the fields after a month and I got a job as an electrician apprentice. And I'm very happy. I do miss the rigs from time to time, but it's it's the things that I learned about the rigs. It's the hard work, the determination, the feeling of accomplishment after you've done something. And uh, I'm not telling you not to join because you should join if you want a sense of purpose, if you want really good money, if you want, you know, uh, to learn something that's going to help you in life, you should join the fields. Um, but this is just for me to give you guys advice that didn't really have a lot of uh, advice to go into this career because, you know, before I got my job as a forehand, I tried to look for answers on what to do as a forehand, what to be. I didn't really find a lot of information. It was more like, you know, it's just entry level. You're going to learn in the job, but I wanted to know what to expect if I was going to be a forehand. So, yeah. So last part of the video, I know I've droned on for like 13 minutes, but last part of the video is the most important thing to know as a floor hand. So this is going to be covered um, with your company, hopefully, but safety. Safety is the number one priority when working on the oil fields, no matter what position you are. You could be floor hand, you could be derrick hand, you could be operator, you can be the company man, whatever. You need to put safety above all else. You're working out in the oil fields. Not to mention there are dangerous materials around you. Sometimes you're going to be working with uh, chemicals. I never did, but there are people that do work with chemicals. There are people that work with um, cement. If you're cementing the hole, no longer going to use it. Um, if you're working with, uh, you know, high pressures, believe it or not, when I was working, one of the first things that they told me was we're going to be working with high pressure systems because basically they were going to be um, pushing water down the hole and then pushing something else up. I, I can't remember what it was, but basically there was going to be high pressure lines all around the work site. And usually they'll put warning signs in front of them. They'll put like red cones that say danger or, you know, like uh, signs that say high pressure, you know, caution or things like that. But just to let you know, you are going to be working with high pressure systems. If you trip on one of them and they explode, 
that's a big no-no okay so try not to do that make sure you are aware of the signs that are around you make sure you're aware of like danger tape or stuff like that be focused be attentive you know just always be looking for things that might say danger or caution or things like that and don't cross them okay most likely your your crewmates are going to say hey they're working right here don't cross those lines until they're finished okay and you're just going to have to be like okay i'm going to go over here and do something else all right safety is the number one priority okay no matter where you are if you're here in colorado if you're in texas if you're somewhere where there are oil fields there's going to be the presence of dangerous gases when you're drilling into the uh the earth here in colorado well first off let me tell you this one of the biggest things they're going to tell you is of a chemical called h2s if you don't know what that is look it up i don't remember the exact name of it but basically it is a very dangerous chemical that comes up from the ground and if you breathe it in i can't remember how much it is uh where if you breathe it in you will collapse and pass away yeah it's pretty scary thankfully in colorado there's not much uh h2s present in the ground but in places like texas or I think probably Arizona or something like that, there are high concentrations of it. But don't worry, it's not gonna come up um, and kill you right away or stuff like that. You're gonna be wearing readers that are gonna detect the stuff before your, your smell can. Um, one of the tricky things about this is usually H2S smells like rotten eggs. If you've ever smelled rotten eggs, they smell really like nasty and sulfury that's basically what it's going to smell like but the problem and the thing with h2s is that if you keep smelling it for a long period of time it is going to kill your smell recept receptors yeah you are not going to be able to smell it after a long period of time and if it goes into your lungs and there's a large quantity of it in your lungs you will most likely pass away i'm just telling you this because it's what's told to me I wish I had known this before I uh, joined the joined the oil fields. Um, it didn't stop me from joining the oil fields, by the way, because most likely there are companies that take large precautions to make sure something like this doesn't happen. But you know, it's just something that you got to look out for. Safety number one priority, and they're gonna explain to you all kinds of things. They're gonna explain to you muster points. They're gonna explain to you what to do in these emergency. Um, in these emergencies they're going to explain to you what not to do you know all the safety procedures and everything they're just you got to pay attention okay don't be droning off don't be slacking off don't be in your own mind don't be daydreaming don't be doing anything of the sort now when you're just doing regular work don't be slacking off that's all i ask of you is don't be slacking off I know that people today are like, oh, work, it's so pointless and stupid and I'm not going to kill myself for this. That's fine. All right. Do that on your own time. When you're out on the fields, don't be slacking off. Don't be daydreaming. Don't be inside of your head. Because believe it or not, if you're not paying attention, you could harm yourself or you can harm others. Okay. Um, I guess that's pretty much it. So you're a helper. It's an entry-level position. You're going to learn a lot. It's hard work, but if you put in the time, put in the effort, you are going to feel so good about yourself in the end. Um, be organized. Help with cleanup. Make sure these guys know that you are there to work and not to slack off, or you're not only there for a paycheck. Um, ask questions. Ask as many questions as possible. If you do not know what's going on, ask questions. You are mostly likely going to attend safety meetings. If you don't know what something is, ask questions. Don't ever be afraid to ask questions. Okay? Never, never, never be afraid to ask questions. Okay? Because if you don't ask questions and you don't know what you're doing, you're going to hurt yourself or you're going to hurt others or something wrong is going to go or something bad is going to go. Okay? So ask questions. Um, don't slack off always know what to do in case of an emergency pay attention above all else and just work hard floor hand is a great position to start off with 
eventually over time, you're probably going to do other things like Derek Hand. You're probably going to switch over to Wireline. You're probably going to do all kinds of other things. Maybe in the, in the future, you'll probably be an uh, operator, maybe even a supervisor, maybe even something else. It's a very rewarding position, and I do miss it sometimes, but, you know, I just wish this was something that was out there when I was a floor hand, you know, something that I would look forward to, information that I would have gathered beforehand, because there were times when I felt like I was doing stuff wrong, and you are going to make some errors, some mistakes, hopefully not too bad, but, you know, it's just stuff, it's life, right? So uh, thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video was informative for you. And uh, good luck as a floor hand and everything. See you guys later.